hello everyone and uh, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Peter Tawil for uh, inviting me to speak at this webinar and uh, let's go on with it. So the uh, broken fire retriever is a very interesting topic for me and I would like to share uh, some uh, insight into this subject. We all know We all know that the anatomy could be uh, simple and it might be complex, but no matter the difficulty of the anatomy that we might encounter, gaining access to the root canal system can be complicated by many factors. We might encounter during our root canal treatment uh, some obstructions that could, could be iatrogenic obstruction like uh, screw posts, silver points, cast posts, uh, separated instruments, fiber post, and so on. Each of them has its own treatment strategy and instrumentation, trying to gain access to the canal system. Frequently, these obstacles are metallic by nature, knowing that the removal of fractured instrument is one of the most difficult procedures in odontics. It is essential to the success of the odontic treatment, and that our ability to remove them may be a deciding factor in determining whether the tooth can be saved or not. We are going to focus in this presentation on broken files and their removal by orthograde technique, uh, leaving aside today the bypass of the fragment and the cleaning and shaping and filling above it, and of course the surgical approach. Since the 90s, Lots of studies describe protocols and devices to manage such cases, keeping in mind that all the, uh, at the time the broken file at the, at the 90s were less frequent and restricted to stainless steel files. And today the percentage has increased a lot and now involves nickel titanium rotary files, which are more difficult to retrieve. According to the literature, 97% of endodontists reported the use of ultrasonics at least at a certain phase of their treatment for the removal of metallic obstacles. In such cases, the acquired skills of the operator are mandatory. Nonetheless, the use of proper tools are of extreme importance. This is why we are going to uh, take a quick overview of different devices and tools used to remove these extracted files, broken files. We are going to start with the mini forceps. Uh, the famous one is the Stiglitz forceps. Then we have the Pete Silver Point uh, forceps and the Ondo forceps from Roydent and the Grab Claw tweezers from Zumak. Uh, the, the first three uh, mini forceps are used mainly in the axis cavity when we have a, uh, a grabbing area or a grabbing. Uh, 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 access to the broken file or instrument and the grab cloth with it is used more deeply into the canal orifice. For the loops and lasso instruments we have the Teroshi, uh, Teroshi retrieval kit the famous uh, kit and we have the more recently the Endo Cowboy uh, another new instrument for uh, retrieval with lasso technique and we have the BTR pen more recent which has a multiple diameter and very interesting instrument for the extractors we have lots of lots of uh, companies that uh, presented it to market extractors uh, we are not going to cite them all we have the master end kit the ondo extractor from Roydent the extracted kit from Cyber and Ondo. This is a short video just to show you the use of the BTR, the latest generation of Lasso, how to use it, how it's efficient for grasping a, an instrument. So first of all you have to cut the donut, uh, uh, silicone donut to release the lasso, then you can adjust the diameter accordingly to the diameter of the broken file. Then we can prevent the, the needle. Then, of course, as we said, we have to prepare the surface, the uh, staging platform around 
the instrument. This is a simulation. So we have to prepare the instrument to have at least one millimeter uh, length to grab the instrument. This is how we grab it and we can retrieve it. Just uh, for informative use. Okay. Moving on, we have uh, more and more kits for retrieval. The instrument removal system from Dent Supply, the IRS, uh, the Canal Finder, the French uh, uh, instrument for the retrieval, the file removal system, which is a variant of the IRS. Uh, this is the file remover and the broken instrument retrieval kit from Zomax, which I'm uh, going to show cases using this technique. Very often, all these devices are aided by ultrasonics to vibrate the file and retrieve it or help preparing the staging pr platform. So what's the impact of a root canal treatment uh, with a broken file? We have two main concerns. Uh, of course, the presence of a metal fragment uh, uh, literature uh, has very uh, few articles about the possibility of corrosion of nickel titanium and stainless steel files. Uh, there's not enough literature to support that or to prove any kind of corrosion on both these alloys. So mainly the, the, the problem here is the separated instrument will block the access to the apical part of the canal and compromises the cleaning and shaping procedure, which uh, in turn will affect the outcome of the treatment. This is why, uh, facing a, a broken file, we should consider the following. First of all, this, the stage of the root canal treatment at which the instruments uh, were separated, and the presence or absence of periapical lesion. During the cleaning and shaping, if we already shape all the canal and the broken file separated at the end, this means that it is uh, that the canal are already cleaned and the organic tissue load is at the minimum. When if the instrument breaks at the beginning of the cleaning and shaping procedure, the remaining tissue load is at the maximum and later on the tissue will dissolve and create a lesion. So this is for a decision making to advise the patient or to uh, find uh, this, the suitable solution for the treatment. As for the presence or absence of periapical lesion, so if we have a case with a broken file, a retreatment case, or we have a broken file inside the, the canals, and there's a lesion, this means that we have to intervene immediately. Either we remove the file and we clean and shape the canal and the, we get healing later on, or we do have to uh, do a surgery to seal the canal and get healing, to seal it apically, of course. To, uh, to, uh, the, to show you this, uh, this point of the problem, I'm going to show you this case. So this case is a retreatment of a second upper molar with a crown and post in place. You are going to tell me where is the broken file. So here's the broken file. After cleaning and shaping the three main canals, while doing the MB2 canal, uh, the, the uh, K file number 15 separated and we have a very big part of the number K15, it's about five millimeter. So here the, the strategy was what? Because we have a broken file and the MB2 and the MB1 was already prepared, so whatever technique I'm going to use to try to retrieve this file, I might push it out to the MB1 canal because they are communicating and it might go outside and it will block the way of the MB1 canal and then I will, will have to do maybe a surgical approach or uh, get the case more and more complex. So here I'm using the Pro Ultra Ondo 8 and the MB1 canal which is already shaped and I'm blocking it from uh, progressing to the apical part and at the same time I'm trying to vibrate it. The only way uh, uh, up is uh, in the MB2 canal so I'm vibrating it from MB1 trying to get it out from MB2. So I'm, I'm seeing it, it's loose, it's not at all uh, uh, squeezed or blocked in the canal. So here it's uh, more coronal than before. I'm trying to grab it with the uh, Zomax micro tweezer and it's out. 
So here I was, it was a very good strategy to try to block it and not try to uh, go down and catch it with any kind of instrument. So this is the separated instrument and the K file uh, which was uh, initially used, you know, the file and the broken file. So the second point is the the interior, the position of the tooth. Each individual case has its own unique characteristic that will dictate the approach taken to manage the case. So if we have uh, the, the, an anterior or posterior tooth or a mesial or distal root, what's, what's the impact of that? The influence of the anatomical factors can be explained in fact in terms of visualization of uh, the instrument and the access to get to the instrument. In this context, we have three main factors that are relevant. The tooth type, if it's a posterior or an anterior tooth. The, if it is a mandibular or a maxillary teeth, because uh, maxillary teeth are more easy to visualize using microscope and a retro mirror. And if the fragment uh, is positioned in a coronal side or a middle side, and apical section, uh, this means after the curvature. This makes the case more and more uh, difficult. And of course, uh, we are going to uh, see cases uh, the, that shows the difference between uh, this situation. And last but not least, the metal nature of the file. So if it's a stainless steel file or if it's a nickel titanium file. If it's a stainless steel file, the vibration used with the ultrasonics uh, are very well uh, uh, absorbed by the stainless steel. And if the stainless steel will get heated, it will uh, it will not change the structure of the of the file, and the, the file will will move easy easily when you are using stainless steel with vibration. Uh, when when you are using with a nickel titanium uh, broken file, uh, we have here we have other situation. The nickel titanium file because it's flexible and because it is night eye. When you uh, generate ultrasonic uh, vibration on it, uh, the night eye will tend to heat, and when it tends to heat, it uh, might break. So the, it's more difficult when you are trying to vibrate a nickel titanium uh, to move it and it will uh, tend to break and we are going to see cases when the night tie will break. And of course the design of the file and the length. The design if the cross section is, uh, is uh, designed with free space with the canal walls so we have more space to go beside it. And the length, more you have a, a very long uh, file, broken file, so if you have a broken file of uh, let's say 12 millimeters, uh, 12 millimeters uh, that means that a part of this instrument is in the coronal part and when you have like, just a small piece of the broken file this means that it might be a very apical and uh, it's not reachable. So when it's long you might be uh, easier to grab. So to uh, elucidate this case uh, we are going to see a few cases so the removal of a separate, separated instrument is more predictable in the following situation. This situation is the most uh, predictable situation. It's an anterior case, a maxillary tooth, a fragment extends into the coronal part of the root canal. The fragment is located before the root canal curvature and the instrument separates in a straight or slightly curved cur curvature. So this is the best scenario to have when we have a broken file, anterior tooth, and a big fragment, and a maxillary tooth. So visibility is to the maximum, and the case is easy to manage. Here, uh, we only used uh, ultrasonic. We can catch the instrument easily and retrieve it. This is the file retrieved and the final obturation. On another hand, when we have a, a second molar, this is a case with a stainless steel file. This is a stainless steel file uh, separated uh, on a second maxillary molar. This is uh, extremely difficult for a maxillary tooth. And we can see that we have a separated instrument and a distal root of the first molar that we didn't treat yet. This case, the female patient presented to the clinic with a history of treatment with a broken file and the mesial root of the second maxillary left molar. Uh, she claims the previous colleague broke the file while treating the tooth and since she feels the instrument while she is running. The broken file is in the mesobuccal canal. After cleaning all the canals, I tried to remove the broken file. So here I'm just examining at the beginning, I'm just examining 
the axis cavity at the seven. You can see the visibility here. I'm working on a seven, uh, upper upper second molar, and the visibility is very good. So I can try to see if I can see the instrument at first. I can see it. It's a, a stainless steel file. I try to grasp it with the uh, Zoomax uh, micro tweezers, and uh, it's not catching. The the thing with the Zoomax extractor uh, uh, micro tweezer, the instrument should be loose. If it's snug into the canal, you cannot uh, remove it. It's very uh, gentle at the uh, at the end point. So the strategy uh, to gain uh, is to uh, get able to to see the to see the instrument. And the ultrasonics, where we use them to liberate the grasping area, and at the end, I'm trying uh, to to grasp it again with the micro tweezers. So now I'm uh, moving to the extractor of Zomax. Here, when I have one millimeter of uh, free uh, of the instrument at the coronal part, I can try to grasp it with the extractor. First time, second time, and at the third time, I can grab it and it's out. I can see it, it's at the entrance of the canal. Now I switch back to the micro tweezer and I catch it. So this is for the maxillary teeth. Uh, moving to uh, the mandibular cases. This is a case that I would like to share with you. This is a case done by my colleagues and friends, by Coris uh, Couvrochel, uh, Dr. Antonietta Bardon, and Cyril Perez. Uh, this case, uh, this is, uh, in fact, uh, a chart used with uh, Endodata. This is a great software for endodontists. Uh, the patient is uh, a female patient, 49 years old. She, she uh, checked for a caries on tooth 44 five years ago. Then uh, we did a filling, a composite filling, a resin filling on it. Then uh, after four years, uh, she did a pulpitis on the tooth, a root canal treatment, and we had a separated instrument in one of the canals. So we have a lower first premolar with two canals, and we have a separation of the instrument. Uh, five, month, five months ago, she started to have uh, symptoms, so it was tender to percussion. And uh, my colleagues tried to uh, have a new approach on this kind uh, of broken file and how to, to retrieve it. So uh, this French team tried to use a guided technique. They are a guided uh, endo uh, team, a great one. I have the pleasure to work with them. So we are uh, studying the case. We have a CBCT imaging and we have a surface scan done with a um, oral scanner. So we have a, a guide created and with a uh, here we use a sleeve. Here the sleeve we did a diameter of one millimeter. They did a diameter of one millimeter. They could have gone for a 0 0.8 diameter but they tried to go for it one because it's the first time they are using this technique. And they don't. They didn't want to miss. So for the first case, they used a, a 0.1 millimeter, and this is the drill going to the head of the broken file. So once you get to the head of the broken file, it's easy to uh, try to gra grab it. This is the video using the extractor after using the trephine of Zumax. We are trying to. Uh, retrieve it with the extractor. When the extractor catches the file, it blocks, it will not uh, release it unless you unscrew the, the extractor. So here, when it catches, it becomes uh, very tight and you'll have, sometimes you'll use the both hands to retrieve it. And this is the file retrieved and the final obturation. Of course, we have the imprint of the trephine but we could have went for a 0.8 here in this case, but for the first case, this is a very promising technique. For a first lower molar, uh, with my very humble experience, these are the cases with the most, this, these are the tooth with the most uh, frequency of broken files. The mesial root of the first lower molar. Here we have two screw posts, more obstacles to gain to the root canal system. Screw posts are removed with ultrasonics as well. 
uh, anti-clockwise rotation and the screw posts are out. After re removing the screw post here, I went for cleaning and shaping of all the canals. Then I kept the broken file canal to the end. I am blocking the other orifice of the canals with Teflon tape here. On the X-ray, we can see only one file. Here we can see three files, three broken files in the same canal. One main, one main broken file and two uh, uh, small files around it. Maybe the previous dentist tried to remove, to remove it with another file. Here I'm vibrating it with uh, ET25 from Satarek, uh, very uh, useful tip. Uh, first of all, uh, I cannot grab it because there are three joined together, so uh, any, any extractor will not be uh, efficient here. So I'm trying to release the main uh, broken file from the small ones. I have the first one that goes out of the irrigation. The second one, I can see it, it's loose at the bottom of the canal. Here either I have to try it with the micro tweezer or I can flush it out because I blocked the other canals. I'm going to flush it out and this is the first broken file out. I still have now my main broken file in the canal. After uh, making space around it, around two millimeters, I know the, the, the file is, is isolated in the canal and it's centered. So here I can easily take the extractor and it goes, it fits perfectly into the canal let to do instrument. And I'm going to grab it and retract, retrieve. This is the retrieval of the file with the Zumax retrieval kit. Very, very efficient. So, uh, more details about uh, the broken file, what you should we consider? Of course, the expertise of the clinician and the adequate tools available. So if we are facing a broken file and we think that this is a very extreme or a very advanced case, it's not a maxillary incisor with a very long file, uh, we should uh, use special tools, or we should have at least experience how to remove it. So we, have, we are going to decide either we uh, refer the case or we try it ourselves if we know and we have the experience. So here, again, the first lower molar. So the visibility and the lower molars are th the most difficult to get because uh, the positioning of the mirror and the microscope are very, very tricky and uh, the learning curve is, uh, uh, is very long. So here we have a broken file in the first molar, and we have here, we can see, we have a radio lucency on the distal side. So this is a complex case. It's a complex case of retreatment. We have uh, the first molar with a missed canal. This is a missed uh, distobuckle canal and a broken file, so uh, more complex. Here you can see that this file is in the mesial root and it's very big. It's accessible, it's at, at the curvature. Here I used, before I'm, use, I'm using the 80 Ultra X Gold, this is an extremely very good ultrasonic tip. I'm going to create space around it at the curvature. Don't work from the outside wall because I'm going to work on the outside wall. It's very easy to perforate. On the inner wall, I'm, I'm removing substance. I'm not, yeah, I'm a little bit vibrating. And I switch to uh, the the satellite uh, 8025 and because i heated it a lot it broke here i have a separated night eye as i told you before the night eye separated because it was overheated and you can see on the on the x-ray up that the file is shorter now than the beginning it's a small piece so this became from a medium case for an extremely difficult case here the visibility was minimal because i was uh, able to memorize the axis so i tried to remove it and i just shoved it outside the canal and now it's loose and I'm taking the Zumax micro tweezer and it's easy at the end. We catch it when it's loose with the micro tweezer, not when it's uh, sticking inside the canal. So this is the retrieval. The canal is empty. I shape the two mesial canals. Then I have the working length and I will go to uh, clean and shape them. Then the two distal canal, the missed canal and the retreatment of the other one, using the reflex from Produit Dentaire, a great, great instrument uh, for my, with my humble opinion, this is a revolution and irrigation. Four canals, very conservative result, as if no instrument was here before. So minimum uh, dentine loss 
when using this technique. A more difficult case. Now it's a second lower molar with the mesial root. So it's the same root, but a little bit more far inside the axis cavity, uh, the uh, oral cavity. So once it, the once we have a this is this is how the patient was referred. So the patient was referred from a dentist to another dentist to another dentist. Then he came to my office. So a separated instrument in the middle third of the canal, and it's the second lower molar. Here the main the main problem is the visibility. Here we have zero zero visibility. It was difficult to adjust the mirror. This is a, a retreatment with two sessions. We did it in two sessions. And uh, the patient was tired, so this is why we uh, postponed the treatment. Here, uh, the broken file was visualized. It is blocking on the inner wall of the root. It's blocked. So again, the same, the same technique. The same technique. The, we are using the uh, Ultra X gold tip from AT, creating space from the inner wall, not from the outside, from the inner wall. So. Uh, while we are moving it, it might go out for on the on the external wall. So this is after removing substance around the tooth. When you are working at this magnification, this is 40 times or 25 times magnification. You can see that the preparation is is huge. In fact, it's not. It's it's very conservative when you are visualizing what you are doing and when you see where the tip of the ultrasonic is working. Here I, I switched to the ET25 and it went out with the ultrasonic. I didn't use any kind of uh, grasper or uh, extractor. So it was vibrated and blocked to the wall and was removed on the wall of the canal. It's in the middle third. I'm going to use just a probe, only a probe. Try to uh, find its way out. I'm going to push it out slowly. Once it, uh, it is at the entrance of the canal, I'm going to take the micro tweezer. And that's it. I'm catching the file. And this is the file. This is a two millimeter file only. So it's a very small file uh, at the junction of the middle third and the apical third. Very difficult. Second lower molar. And this is the cone fit. Obturation and the final x ray now. This is the final exit. Less, uh, it's, there is more damage than the first case, but it's, it's still very acceptable. So, trying to manage these complex cases of uh, broken file retrieval, you have to know the anatomy. So, you have to know the anatomy, which case is more predictable than the other, and you have, of course, to have this proper tool to use to do these cases. And of course, you have to build up skills. You cannot retrieve a file from the first time you, you have a file retrieval to do. So anatomy, tools, and build up skills. And I would like, thank you. I would like to thank you for this uh, opportunity. I hope this uh, uh, brief presentation was uh, uh, useful and helpful. You can uh, always contact me on social media to have any question. And I would like to thank again Dr. Peter Tawil for, the, for hosting this event. Thank you.